Have you been in contact with the developer or the state about the current status of the project? I have not um, had a formal conversation with the developer in months. Uh, and to tell you the truth, I can't tell you when was the last time we sat down uh, at the negotiating table. I have, uh, however, initiated dialogue uh, with the ESDC chair as well as with the governor's office to try and get some of the unresolved issues um, resolved in a manner that's satisfactory for our community. I'm less than cautiously optimistic that we can make substantial progress, but I'm still hopeful, particularly uh, in areas related to governance of the project moving forward and getting a structure in place that gives our communities the same protection as the communities where the Brooklyn Bridge Park is being developed, Queens West, as well as Moynihan Station. I've also made clear to them in the letter that I think that eminent domain should not be used, uh, reiterated that concern, and I'm hopeful that the governor uh, would recognize the passions around this issue and the great uncertainty connected to the Atlantic Yards project that I believe still remains so that the situation here doesn't turn into the situation in New London. They're planning to go to court on Friday to condemn property, so I mean, you didn't get a, not like you've gotten anywhere with it. Well, I said that we were less than cautiously optimistic, and unfortunately, uh, in this area, I believe that ESDC and the governor have not been sensitive to the concerns that have been voiced by the community around this eminent domain issue and several other issues, and I can only be hopeful that there'll be a last-minute change of heart. What did, you, what did you specifically ask? Well, we asked that the governor promised to conduct a review of the finances right. of the project. Right. And in the letter that I sent to him in early December, we said that he should halt movement on this project until he's able to convince us that a comprehensive review has been undertaken. Because it makes no sense to allow the project to move forward on a parallel track with his review because essentially it makes the review worthless. And have, do you know where that, that review There's is? There's been no response uh, to me with respect to the precise nature of where the review is other than for them to say that it's ongoing. Um, two more things. Um, you, you were talking about a governance structure? You're talking about like the, is that the governance structure that the Brooklyn Speaks people wanted? Well, you know, there's the governance structure that the Brooklyn Speaks folks have talked about, uh, which turned into a bill that Belmont Montgomery and I had introduced right. last session uh, and will reintroduce this session, but there's also the precedent that has been set by the local development corporation subsidiary context in projects like Brooklyn Bridge Park, Queens West, and Warnerhound Station, and ESDC has never given me a good answer as to why our community is treated differently than these other communities. Never given me a good answer. You saw the information I sent you this morning about the time to, I mean, they officially say they're going to build this thing in 10 years. The documentation gives some other numbers. I mean, if you, what's your sense? I've made the point to ESDC that I'm not convinced that the developer uh, will commit to doing this project in a manner that builds the affordable housing uh, to deal with the crisis that we currently are facing right now, or will even commit to building the entire thing within the time frame set forth in the four corners of the agreement. They've assured me that that agreement will penalize them and obligate them to do it within the time frame that has been set forth. I'm not necessarily convinced right now. What, what are the penalties? That, that, that's, that's precisely my point. Okay.